Today we're going to cover terminating CAT6 cable, putting a jack on CAT6 cable using Panduit's Minicom system. The CAT6 jack that I have here, the Minicom jack, the part number on that is CJ688TGBU. And this jack comes in two parts. You have the jack body and then what they refer to as the wire block. And on one side of the wire block is the strain relief collar. And this collar, this top part of the collar actually slides down and you'll see that in a bit. Now on the wire block they have the, the color legend here for termination and if you'll notice, the bottom row, there's the letter F, and on the top row is the letter R. If you were to hold the wire block horizontal, looking straight onto it, the F stands for front row here, and the R stands for the rear row, which will be back here. So you have the front and rear row, left and right sides. So you have four quadrants corresponding to the four pairs of your CAT6 cable. So what we want to do is put the brown pair on the left side of the front row, or this lower left quadrant as you're looking at this. And then the blue pair goes in the upper left quadrant. Now looking at our color legend for the right side, you'll notice that they have two different legends here, A and B. That's for uh, the 568A and 568B uh, color schemes. Ethernet uses the 568B, which is uh, the upper legend on the right side here. So we see that the green pair is going to go in the front row and the orange pair is going to go in the rear row. Now once you've got the correct pairs in each of the quadrants, you want to kind of, you'll see how the pairs are kind of all twisted together. You want, kind of want to give this a turn to untwist them and push the wire block down as far as you can because you want the jacket to get seated up against that wire block so that the, when the strain relief collar here comes down, it comes down on the jacket of the cable. So push that all the way on, like so. Get your pairs moved out to the sides for a second here. You'll see why in a second. Now the, the uh, CAT6 Minicom jacks have this little tool. Highly recommended. It only costs a few bucks. It's a bargain. It's called the uh, EGJT tool stands for Enhanced Giga TX Jack Tool. EGJT. Panduit's not real creative with their part numbers, but it works. What we want to do at this point now, we want to put this strain relief collar, we want to push that down on the jacket of the cable. You want to make sure that's pushed all the way in. Take your EGJT tool, doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, and open this up so that the lanyard hole here is at the pointing down on the left side and you'll see this little indentation here. 
on the left. That's where the wire block is going to sit. And this little knob here on the right side, that's what's going to push down on this strain relief collar right here with the two little ears on it. So with the wires off to the side, that's why we wanted to move them out of the way. We set that down in there, push the cable, make sure the cable's pushed all the way in, and then just flip this over, and you'll hear it kind of ratchet down a little bit. Let's push down, bring it back, and you'll see now that that collar, it's a little crooked, isn't it? Let me give that a, another push here. That's better. That's a little straighter. It came down on the on the shield. And now we can finish with the jack installation. We're going to set this aside because we're going to need it again. Now you'll notice that for each quadrant, there's these two little grooves. Each quadrant has two little grooves. I don't know how well you can see that there. And they have little hooks. And that's for you to pull the wire through down to the bottom of those channels, those grooves. And that hook will kind of keep it in place. Now you'll notice that for each quadrant, like for the uh, brown pair here, you've got white brown on the left and solid brown on the right. That tells you that the white brown cable, the white cable or white uh, conductor of the brown pair is going to go in the left channel and the solid brown conductor is going to go in the right channel. Now here's the thing, you do not want to untwist uh, the, the pairs. What the, if you look closely at the instructions that they, they ship with the jacks, they simply want you to pull the twisted pair over the point that's between those two hooks and have that point kind of uh, separate the two. But here's the problem, and I, I, I run into this quite often. Typically, you want to keep your untwisting to a minimum on CAT6 cables, but you'll notice right here that if I was to pull this, this brown pair over that point, the solid brown conductor would end up on the left side, and that's not correct. We need the solid brown connector to be on the right side of that point. So we may have to do a little untwisting here. to get that white wire on the left side and it also serves to make a little hole in the in the twist so it, it, there is some benefit to that and we get that point put in there in the separation between the two wires and we just pull down so that the two wires go into the channels underneath those hooks You'll notice that the solid brown wire is in the left, the, I'm sorry, the right channel under that hook, and the white conductor of the brown pair is under, is in the left channel underneath the hook. And uh, I believe that the orange pair appears to have the most twist. The, these, uh, the, the four different pairs do have different twist rates. Now you'll notice here again, the, uh, the green wire, the solid green conductor is on the left side and that's not what we want. So we're going to have to untwist this a little bit to get that wire, that white wire on the left side. It gives us a little opening and we just put the point through there 
and pull down. All the way down to the bottom of that channel. You want to make sure that it's seated at the bottom of the channel. Now once you get them all all in their correct channels, blue, white, solid blue, which is what we have there. Once you get them all in their correct channels, you just take your wire cutters and snip them off. If you have a little extra, that's not a problem. The only thing you want to be careful of is that if you have enough extra that it doesn't interfere with this little knob here on top of the wire block, which is on the opposite side of your color legend. Because that little knob is going to correspond, you'll notice here's the jack body, it's going to correspond to this little catch tab on the top of the jack. That thing flexes up and, and goes up over that. So you've got your, your wires in there and when you push this into the jack body you'll notice the corresponding IDC blades in the jack body. IDC just stands for insulation displacement and that's just a fancy way of saying it just cuts through the the insulation on these wires to make uh, contact with the, the copper conductor. It slices through those to make your connection. So what we want to do is slide this in so that this little catch tab is on the same side as the knob. Get it started. And then what we want to do is take our EGJT tool and this time we want to put the, uh, the lanyard hole to the left and up and when you look at it this way on the right side is where you want to place the jack. Now this is a, I don't know how well you can see this but this it's a little confusing here. There's a, there's a, a ledge right here but this is not what you want to put the jack up against. You actually want to put it against this lower one down here, the, the inner one. So you flip this all the way down. You take your jack so that the bottom goes in here up against this, this inner ridge. Put it in there like that and push it up against there and hold it down. Now as you rotate this left side, you'll notice these two humps here. That's what's going to rotate down against the strain relief collar and push that wire block and seat it into the jack body. As long as it doesn't slide up too much. There. So you hold it down to the bottom bring this right side up and you will hear the snap and you'll notice there's no longer any space in here like there was before. So that's latched in there. You have a good CAT6 compliant jack installation. One thing I want to mention is these jacks are not cheap. The, the little tool is cheap but the jacks I think they actually cost more than the tool. The jacks are about, uh, we paid nine dollars a piece for them. Um, and uh, but the nice thing is you're not going to have a lot of waste because it's a very simple system um, and if time is money once you get good at this you're going to be able to put these on at, at, at quite a brisk rapid pace and if you have a whole bunch of them to do uh, it'll go quite quickly but that's the Panduit Minicom system uh, these jacks will snap into the Panduit Minicom face plates and they also snap into these Minicom surface mount wall boxes 
I verified that today and that's all there is to it. It's, uh, it's a very easy system and worth the money.